E. C. Kai. Rebirth of the Malicious Empress of Military Lineage, Chapter 210, Birthday. On the third day of the seventh month, it was Zi Jing Xing's birthday. Everyone in the residence of Prince Ruai became busy. From what others said, even though Zi Jing Xing himself did not like it, Emperor Yang Le would hold a banquet for Zi Jing Xing in Bai Ziyu Lu yearly to celebrate for Zi Jing Xing. The more Emperor Yang Le expressed that he valued Zi Jing Xing, the better the officials would treat Zi Jing Xing. Of course, Zi Jing Xing's performance in the past two years was worth the scrutiny. The birthday celebration was a day where one could flatter so early in the morning. There were birthday presents that were continuous brought over to the residence. Tang Shu was busy registering all the items in a booklet before bringing over to Shen Miao to look. Shen Miao was after all the Wang Pei of the residence of Prince Ru Ai and even though she was in a cold war with Zi Jing Xing, she had to look through the list of gifts. Shen Miao swept a glance of it and her eyes were dazzled by the list of names. No matter if it was a high-ranking official or low-ranking government official, they all rushed over to flatter. Even the Lu and Yi family also sent over gifts. Shen Miao's heart was deeply moved. It was all because of the close relationship between Emperor Yongla and Zi Jing Xing. If this was Ming Qi, if any official's birthday celebration had so many people celebrating, it would be suspicious to the eyes of the emperor. Thus after coming to Wang Yi, it felt somewhat strange to see it handled so openly. Tang Shu pointed out to Shen Miao what gifts to be placed in the storehouse and which gifts could be used before he asked Shen Miao. Furin must not forget to dress up earlier. Tai Yi's side will arrange people to pick Furin up to head to Bai Zhao Lu. Shen Miao said doubtfully, I, Tang Shu smiled, Furin is the Wang Pei of the residence and his highness's wife. Naturally Furin have to go for his highness's birthday. After hesitating, he said, quarrels between a couple is like fighting at the head of the bed and make up at the end of the bed. His highness looked like he is angry but if Furin don't go over today, one do not know how long he would sulk, so, I understand, I will go over. Shen Miao said. Tang Shu then sighed in relief and reminded a couple more sentences to Shen Miao before leaving. After he left, Shen Miao looked at that booklet and kept it well. When she was returning to the room, Jings came over and asked Shen Miao cautiously, Furin will definitely go to Bai Zhao Lu right? The residents of Prince Ru Ai are monitored by other and I just came to Great Liang, thus other people would be watching the bustle. If one do not go then others would have the opportunity to talk. It is better to head directly. Use a general when the soldiers come and build a dam from earth when the water approaches. Jings nodded her head continuously. That's right. They want to see how our Wang Pei from Ming Chi looks like then let them see clearly Furin who comes from a general residence. How could anyone casually become a Wang Pei? Gu Yu pulled Jing's and glared at her before whispering, the more you say the more exaggerated it becomes. Jing's pouted and seeing that Shen Miao had headed to the room, she bit Gu Yu's ears. Furin is still feeling awkward and looked for so many reasons to give in to Gu Yi used by wife's side of the family to call the husband, but no one will laugh. After speaking, she then felt emotional, Gu Yi really have abilities to let Furin be willing to give in. Gu Yu said, speak a few words lesser. Shen Miao returned to the room and Gings followed in with Gu Yu. Gu Yu asked, would Furin like to choose what to wear tonight? Then this servant will be able to think of what hairstyle to comb. Shen Miao said, do those later? Help me to grind ink first. Jings and Gu Yu looked at one another as the two of them did not know why Shen Miao had the mood to write now. Speaking of which, Shen Miao was not one who loves writing or drawing but they would naturally do what one's master wanted. When Shen Miao opened up the paper for a letter, Gu Yu and Gings then understood that she wanted to write a letter. Shen Miao asked Gu Yu, older Biao's sister is returning soon? Gu Yu said. Gentleman Zhao had passed a message that she will definitely be able to catch up with the birthday celebration in Bai Zhao Lu tonight. One did not know where did Lu Tan and Zhao Yang disappeared to for these few days. Lu Tan had a fierce temper and with Zhao Yang bullying and deceiving her, one thinks that it would take some time for Lu Tan's anger to dissipate so Zhao Yang simply took her away. Shen Miao was rest assured as with Zhao Yang's character. 
he would not do anything bad to Lu Tan and it was Zhao Yang who was in more danger. Today was Zhe Jing Xing's birthday, so Zhao Yang, as Zhe Jing Xing's arms and legs and also his friend, naturally had to rush over. After thinking for a while, she then started to write. She wrote somewhat hesitantly. After writing two to three sentences, she felt that it was not good and quickly crushed it and threw it aside. She then started to write again but again, like just now, threw it away. At the end, one did not know how much paper was wasted before she hang her brush. She put the letter into the envelope before handing it over to Jing's, when you see Tai Yi later, pass this to him and let him hand it over to Zi Jing Xing during the birthday celebration. Jing's eyes widen as she did not think that it was for Zi Jing Xing. She had thought that Shen Miao was writing a letter for Shen Xin and wife and was curious because the letter home was only written two days back so why write again? Shen Miao said, Gu Yu, take a trip out for me. She then pulled out a piece of paper and wrote a few things before passing to Gu Yu. Help me to buy the following things. Gu Yu quickly complied. Two of them hurriedly left. Shin Miao sat in the room but she was relieved. Giving in was something that she seldom do. Especially in this lifetime, the self-esteem in her bones did not allow her to bow her head to others but this time it was her that was wrong. Moreover Zi Jing Xing was also a prideful person and between two of them, there must be someone that had to lower their head first. Shen Miao thought that since Zi Jing Xing did not know anything at all so there was no need for him to bow his head. As one would receive many gifts during the birthday celebration, she also had to show her sincerity. Since there was no shortage of gold, silver and jewels in the residence of Prince Ruai and she was not considered good at handmade things, after some thought, she only had some few simple things. Moreover from what Ba Zhao said, Zi Jing Xing looked very picky on the surface but in reality very easy to coax. However what mattered to her the most was that the Yi family were among the guests in Bai Zhao Lu and thus Yi Mian brother was also one of them. Since Yi Mian brother was present, she had to follow up to prevent the two of them from playing any tricks and could not let Zi Jing Xing have any interactions with these two of them without her presence. Time passed very quickly and in a turn of an eye, it was near evening. Tai Yi had send of people to come over to pick up and Jing's put on the pearl hairpin onto Shen Miao's hair with a smile, finish. Furin today can compete with everyone today. I am not in the selection of Zayu Nu so what is the use of this? Shen Miao laughed and looked at the mirror before pulling out that pearl hairpin off and replaced it with a purple jade begonia. Jing's blinked her eyes, it is even better to match it like this. The scene of how Zi Jing Xing gave her this jade begonia appeared in front of her. At that time they were up on guards with one another and were full of suspicion of each other. At that time Shen Miao was unclear about Zi Jing Xing's background and only felt that he was different from the rumors of the previous lifetime. There were just too many coincidences and unimaginable things in life that now she and Zi Jing Xing became husband and wife and they came to Great Liang together. This was something that she had never thought about at that time. Perhaps by wearing this jade begonia hairpin would let Zi Jing Xing's anger dissipate and make him recall how they journeyed from strangers to a married couple and all those unnecessary suspicions were not needed. Shen Miao stood up and there was a gentle smile on her face. Ba Zhao and the rest are outside waiting. Let's go. When they went out the doors, they indeed saw that the horse carriage was already prepared and Ba Zhao and Hua Xiong was waiting outside. Jing's asked curiously, His Highness is not going together with Furin? Hua Xiong somewhat awkwardly replied, His Highness left first and let these subordinates come over to pick up Furin. This made others feel somewhat uncomfortable. For the prince and Wang Pei not leave together and come out one another. Those with discerning eyes would see that there was a problem. Jing's and Gu Yu felt some indignant for Shen Miao but Shen Miao faintly said, All right, let's depart then. She knew what kind of temperament Zi Jing Xing had. At times, a proud person would be as stubborn as a sea urchin. She would not be calculative with these small things and just felt that there was some uneasiness in her apologies tonight. Bai Zhao Lu was the largest and most expensive restaurant in Long Yi. Not mentioning commoners, it was very prestigious for officials to hold a banquet here. Thus to hold a birthday celebration here, 
It was not just one or two tables but the entire restaurant was booked and it was considered very impressive, to create such an impressive scene, naturally it would require a lot of money and for three continuous years, the residents of Prince Rui has held banquets here and this was enough to show how rich the residence was. On the main seat, a young man was sat in an inclined manner, indifferently hearing all the compliments from others. The purple gold long robes seemed to almost completely fill the entire seat and from a distance, it was like one was seeing an overflowing night scenery and there was a charming and gentle luxurious feel. There were too many people who came over to toast. That one's body was naturally become intoxicated but the pair of peach blossoms eyes was very clear, making others unsure if one was drunk or not. There were also female family members among the guests and upon seeing that young man, they all involuntarily cast their admiration eyes over. This Prince Rui was young and had a peerless handsomeness but an air of devilish charm which was what made females obsessed with. Coupled with his noble and high position and wealthy background, it made one want to rush up despite smashing one's head. It was a pity that such a young maid was already married and had an officially wedding Wang Pei. However even though there was a Wang Pei, the secondary consort position was still empty. Even if one did not become a secondary consort, everyone would be competing to be a concubine. Lu Er was sitting by Lu Furan's side and her gaze was involuntarily on Zi Jing Xing. Two years ago when she first saw Zi Jing Xing, she became clamored with him as she felt that all men were vulgar and only this person would be matching with her but that position by her side should be hers. However that stupid woman, Shen Miao, had stood on that position that made Lu Er so furious that she could not wait to tear Shen Miao apart. She had the intention to speak with Zi Jingxing but there were officials who were complimenting Zi Jingxing and she was only a young lady of an official family. No matter how courageous one was, she could not ingratiate oneself like that and thus became somewhat moody. In a blink of an eye, she saw Yi Ku was talking to Yi Mai and Lu Er's entire face sank. As a female, one would always be more sensitive to the appearance of another female. Lu Er believed that she was spoiled and all she eat and wore were of the best and thus upon seeing other females, she would have a gaze of despise. In the entire long Yi, she felt that she was as precious even comparable to princesses that she would not even place the Yi family, who were of equal status as the Lu family, in her eyes. It was because the Yi family's descendants line was thin and there were no young ladies at all. However one had heard that the Yi family have received a pair of wandering siblings back. Initially Lu Anner still had the mentality of watching a spectacle but upon a look now, after seeing Yi Mai's appearance, she was not at all happy. Yi Mai was just too beautiful already. Not mentioning one's beauty, there was a unique charm that made others look at her involunteeringly. If one were to say it was seductiveness, it had a touch of innocence in the seductiveness. If one were to say T was innocence, there was a mature sense of style. The most important thing was that Yi Mai was smart that even though both siblings only recognized in the geniality books, they were able to chat with those furans. A beautiful, smart and new went to advance and retreat female and now newly crowned with the Yi family's young lady position. Seeing Yi Furan doting her excessively due to guilt, she was much better than herself in many ways and this made Lu Anner feel a strong sense of crisis. One even heard that this Yi Mai saved Prince Ru Ai's life and naturally had a closer relation to the residents of Prince Ru Ai. Lu Anner gritted her teeth with hate. For a long time, Lu Anner had regarded Zi Jingxing as hers, that even with Shen Miao present, Lu Anner had never dismissed her thoughts. An official daughter of another country would not have any support in Long Yi and with the Lu family's abilities, it would not be a difficult thing to find an opportunity in the future to make her disappear and thus Lu Anner had never put Shen Miao in her view. However Yi Mai was different, everyone knew that the Yi family had a delicate relationship with the Lu family and was not considered a friend or an enemy. If the Yi family were to be related to the residence of Prince Ru Ai, Lu Anner became alert and bit her lips without saying a thing. She was thinking at this side but at the other end Yi Furan said somewhat surprisingly, speaking of it, 
one had not seen Wang Pei. Could it be that Wang Pei would not be coming today? The furans around started to whisper. Actually everyone were not blind and naturally had noticed earlier on that Shen Miao did not come and they did not mention it because no one spoke of it. Now that Yi Furan brought the topic up, naturally they started to discuss. Yi Furan then said, could it be that one's health is sick? A few days back when I went to pick up my earned cur, one saw that Wang Pei of first rank was somewhat haggard. Thinking about it, it would be as such since his highness was sick and she, as a wife, would naturally be worried that one's health would be impacted that one could not take care of his highness. When those words were out, there was a sigh of understanding. From Yi Furan's words, she had mentioned without a trace that the relationship of Yi Mai and brother had a close relationship with the prince residence and also suppressed Shen Miao. When Prince Ru-ai's life was hanging by a thread, Shen Miao did not go to take care of him at all. Even if one's birthday was really unwell, this action was against one's conscience. At Xi Jingxing's end, he was taking in the toast and one did not know if he had heard Yi Furin's words as there was a light smile on his lips and his gaze did not look over the side. Someone said, could it be that the married couple is quarreling? How could this be? Lu Furin laughed amiably. At the beginning Wang Pei personally said that the residence of Prince Ru I would not bring in anyone else. So it can be seen that both of their relationship is extremely good else one would not say such things. Since one's feelings are this good, there would definitely not be quarrels. It is better not to think too much. Lu Furin was took what Shen Miao said to heart till this day and the more she said as such, it was like slapping Shen Miao's face. When Lu Wanner heard those words, her mood that was previously disturbed by Yi Mai became slightly better. Even though she was not pleased with Yi Mai, but if she saw Shen Miao and Zi Jing Xing was not of good terms, she would become happy. Yi Mai looked at Yi Furan slightly. The prince residence will not bring in people. Yi Furan shook her head and said softly, It is Wang Pei who said it herself. Lu Tan had an entire stomach of anger as she listened. She had rushed back afar and did not expect that she was unable to see Shen Miao. She did not know any of the Furans or young ladies here and could not interrupt to speak for Shen Miao as it would bring her trouble. She could not bear to hear all these nonsense that these people were speaking. It cannot be that she would not come right? Another Furan asked. Just as Lu Tan was about to argue, she heard a gently laughter from outside. My apologies. One had arrived late. Everyone unconsciously looked over towards the doors. A young female parted the beaded curtains and walked in with a mile. She was young and her facial appearance was extremely delicate. Her brows were like new moons, eyes were like the autumn water and her lips were slightly hooked up. She wore a dark purple lily robes and with a lilac dress, with her hair up in a cloud bun and a dark purple eight treasure earrings. It was not an extravagant dressing and was considered simple. But upon her arrive, it was as if the entire hall was lit up luxuriously. Not only the dark and serious purple was not over the top, it instead highlighted her snow-like complexion and her brows like a painting. As she came in step by step, the skirt swayed, making her look fascinating. It was a very different kind of beauty from Yi Mai. A beauty was in one's bones and not just the skin. Yi Mai was beautiful but this female's beauty was like water in spring like thin ice in summer, the crescent moon in autumn and snow in winter. The beauty was in the bearing and the beauty was in one's expression of being oneself. It was as if it was not a point more or less that made one unable to look away but feel heart-wrenching. One dared not have delusion and could only look up to. Shen Miao lifted her chin slightly and walked over to the main position and sat at the middle of the side of the female guests. She had a graceful expression on that in this entire room of furans and young ladies, they were all aristocrats but comparing with her, they seemed to be dwarfed. She took the wine cup that Lu Tan brought over and smiled, one punish oneself with a cup of wine for being late. And she elegantly drank the cup cleanly, neither servile nor overbearing, neither biased nor dependent. There was a sense of heroism and elegance. There were many followers of Zi Jingxing that were present and would definitely fawn but Shen Miao's action made one's heart feel good and they immediately raise a toast with smiles. Wang Pei has a magnanimous bearing, 
We will also toast to it, Lu Tan blinked her eyes as she had felt that Shen Miao was exceptionally beautiful today and her bearing was exceptionally different today. No matter what, it made her feel honorable and as if she had face and her back was unconsciously straighter. Shen Miao smiled slightly and her eyes swept across everyone but she remembered how Jing's and Gu Yu rushed the entire afternoon for. She must use the identity of Ru Ai Wang Pei to meet with everyone in Long Yi and the most important thing was that Mai Furin was present. She did not allow herself to have a slight defeat in front of Mai Furin as she was carrying the dignity of her children. No matter how miserable her loss was in the previous lifetime, this lifetime was not the past and she would not give in a single line. Yi Mai looked startled at Shen Miao with some shock in her eyes. Shen Miao smiled faintly at her but her heart was as cold as a hail. These siblings dared to openly appear in front of her again and again. Did they think that with the Yi family? They could be exceptionally fearless? Lu Tan tugged Shen Miao slightly and said in a voice where only both of them could hear, Youngest Biao sister, are you quarreling with my Fu? Why does it look like something is not right? Shen Miao looked towards Zi Jing Xing. He was listening casually to an official toasting and was indeed filled with indifference. Shen Miao was slightly stunned as she did not know if Tai Yi had given that letter to him and if Tai Yi gave him the letter and he was still like this. Then Shen Miao was not confident that she could explain it. Just as one was thinking, one heard it Aaron speaking, since everyone has arrived. Everyone will give birthday congratulations to His Highness the Prince of First Rank. Everyone raised their cups. Zi Jing Xing's lips hooked up in compliance and drank it up. One heard one of the Furens talking, speaking of which, Yi Furen has just found young Lady Yi and young Master Yi. For young Lady Yi to be so beautiful, one thinks that she is talented and since there is some relations with the residence of Prince Ru Ai. It is ideal to sow some skills to Prince Ru Ai as congratulations. There were some demeaning meanings to those words. It was somewhat frivolous for a young lady to perform one's talents in front of others if it was not an examination. Moreover Yi Mai grew up in a merchant family so who would know how much talents she had? This Furin was obviously searching for thorns. It seemed that the Yi family have quite a lot of political families. Yi's face was somewhat unhappy and Yi Furin was about to Fuse politely when Yi Mai smiled, it is not impossible but one fear of sweeping everyone's interest and dared not display one's incompetence. The Furin who proposed it was eager to see her display one's incompetence and immediate laughed. How can it be? It would not be so. Your Highness, don't you think so? Zi Jing Xing's brows raise and only glance over to this side. His lips widen and he said in a smile but not a smile. Dance then. His tone of voice was somewhat casual, as if instructing some dancer. Yi Mai's eyes flashed but she stood up and gave Shen Miao a bow. Since everyone is interested today and I have just arrived in Long Yi, one do not know if any rules are broken and is not sensible. One however is willing to display one's incompetence to make everyone happy. The words were said very moderately like it was considerate of others and had some sense of innocence but charming teasing was present. However Shen Miao saw the provocation in Yi Mai's eyes. One had learned a type of water sleeve dance from foster mother and will dance for everyone to see today. She said. Shen Miao head was lowered and a trace of a sneer appeared on her lips. Yi Mai quickly came out after changing her clothes. She was born with a somewhat feminine charming good looks but wore a snow white long dress, with a wide waist that wrapped her arms. If one wanted to be filial, then she outdid herself with this snow white dress. Four screens were arranged accordingly and they had paper on them. Since paper, ink and the Ken players were present, Yi Mai shook her long sleeves as the first strings were played and she started to dance. Shen Miao's fingernails almost pierce into the skin of her palms. Ink dance was Yi Mai's best dance. Yi Mai was proficient in all the four scholarly arts and each individual one was outstanding. In the inner palace, naturally it had its charm. However the ink dance was just one of many, when one was dancing. The sleeves would be dipped in ink so as to paint on the paper. Once the song ends, the painting would be finished. It was both elegant and unique. With a beauty, a picturesque scene and beautiful paint, 
it was really outstanding, but this water sleeved dance was the blood in Shen Miao's heart and the thorn in her eyes that every time she saw it, the pain was unstoppable. When Li Zhong Nu came to request for a marriage alliance, Fu Zai Yi wanted to marry Wan Yu over. Shen Miao used both gentle methods and force even using the Shen family to threaten but Fu Zai Yi's heart was like a rock and did not move. Wan Yu thought for a long time and came out with an idea. She learned a song and personally played it for Fu Zai Yi to listen. Wan Yu searched for that song for a long time and it was rearranged by Shen Miao so that whatever Wan Yu wanted to say was in the song. It was hoped that Fu Zai Yi recall the father and daughter relationship and would not make matters so sever leaving a path for Wan Yu and dispel this thought. But on that day Shen Miao invited Fu Zai Yi to Kunning Palace and instructed Wan Yu to play it for Fu Zai Yi to listen but once she finished playing, when there was a trace of movement in Fu Zai Yi's eyes, my Furin came over uninvited and said without regards for others, so your majesty is here. Chen Qi has learned a dance and want to dance for your majesty to appreciate. Since her ladyship the Empress is present, do watch together. She danced charmingly and affectionately. He watched with deep emotions and totally forgotten Wan Yu and Shen Miao who were waiting. Shen Miao would forever remember the disappointment in Wan Yu's eyes. She was just a teenage young female but the vitality in her eyes slowly faded away and it remained calm. On the second day, Wan Yu came to greet her and said, Imperial Mother do not need to waste effort on this child. This child is willing to be in the alliance marriage. How would someone be willing to be in an alliance marriage? It was just that Wan Yu could see clearer and earlier than Shen Miao of Fu Zayu Yi's ruthlessness and my Furin's means. Perhaps Wan Yu felt that even if she were to head towards without knowing what her future was, it would be much more comfortable than staying in the palace. At the end, Wan Yu was liberated, but Shen Miao could never be released. The long snow white sleeves fluttered during the dance but Shen Miao felt that the long sleeves were not stained in ink but stained with drops of Wan Yu's blood. That was the thorn in her eye, the nail in her bone. 